Did you know you have the power to change your life? It all depends on your beliefs. If you have limiting beliefs, you limit yourself. I'm Becky Beach, and I'm here to help you overcome your limiting beliefs so you can design your dream life. This is the Becky Beach Show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Becky Beach Show. I'm Becky Beach. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to do self-care. Especially if you're a busy mom or a busy mom business owner or even a, a business owner that's not a mom, like you definitely need self-care. It's highly, highly important. If you don't do self-care, you're going to burn yourself out. I guarantee it. I spend every Friday doing some self-care. Like I like to go in a bubble bath or I like to get my nails done or my hair done. I just like to just sit in one of those comfy massage chairs and just go, it's like so much fun. I just lo love those massage chairs at the nail salon. It's always important to take time out or you can do some exercise. There's plenty of self-care ideas. And let me go through my self-care ideas. I have 25 ideas. So the first idea is you should love yourself. Even if you're, you're not like a supermodel pretty, you can still love yourself. It doesn't matter. You're more relatable anyway. Mo most people are not supermodel, you know, they're, they're average women, you know, so you should love your flaws. Like if you have some cellulite, like I got cellulite, you know, on my butt and my thighs, but I still love myself. I don't care. You know, that's part of being, being a mom. I got stretch marks from having my child. You know, I, I love that about myself. I look at my body and I just embrace it. I just love it so much because like this body gave birth to this wonderful, wonderful little boy named Brian. He's just the nicest, sweetest little boy, you know, I've ever met. You probably feel the same about your kids, but I, I just love my sweet little Brian so much. And he came from me. So my body was able to, you know, give birth to him. So I love my body and all its flaws, like my stretch marks and my C-section scar and my cellulite on my hips and butt and my, my tummy's bigger than like average, than not, than not average, but like a supermodels would, you know, like supermodels, they don't have any stretch marks, it seems. But, you know, a lot of them will do Photoshop. They'll take pictures and they'll Photoshop out their cellulite. Like I won't mention any, any names that do that, but some supermodels, they, they do have cellulite. So what they do is they Photoshop it out. So there's like these beauty standards are not real. They're fake. So the beauty standard that you may see in magazines, they're airbrushed in Photoshop. They aren't real. If they were to show real women, then you would definitely see, you know, cellulite and stretch marks, but they just don't show that. So you should love yourself. It's highly important no matter how you look. Like you're a wonderful, unique individual that's, that's unlike anybody else. Like nobody else is like you. So definitely love yourself. And the next thing I got to say is you need to plan your time. Like it can get really busy juggling between roles, but if you plan your time, it could lead to a healthier and balanced lifestyle. When you have kids, scheduling time can be challenging, but try to arrange the time when you engage in different activities. Always ensure that you create a time in your schedule for self-care and explain to those close not to d disturb you when you're taking your me time. You should set boundaries because like some some kids will bother you when you're trying to take a, take a bubble bath. Well, Tell your husband or other significant other, say, hey, you know, I'm going to be taking a bubble bath during this time. So could you please keep Marty away from me? I just want to relax and enjoy myself, you know, so just like make, make sure your significant other, you know, knows they need to be the caregiver while you're taking a bubble bath or you're trying to do some self-care. Like say you want to do some exercise for your self-care, then you got to set boundaries and make sure your, your other your significant other will take care of your kids. That way you can relax. I'm sure they will. You know, they love you very much. So the next thing you could do is relax and engaging, re relax in yoga. Like yoga is really good for self-care. It's beneficial for both body and mind. You could go on YouTube for free and you could follow a, a, a yoga practice for a few times a week. You can get up early in the morning before anybody wakes up like your kids or a significant other wake up and you can start doing some yoga in the morning. You can get like a yoga mat at Target for very low cost or at Walmart. You can just sit there or even if you don't, you don't need a really need, need a mat, but it's like more comfy. And you can just sit there and do some yoga stretches or you can even, you know, join a yoga club with a friend. That way you're out of the house and nobody can bother you. So if you're going to do yoga, yoga at the house, I recommend getting up early or staying up late to do like some meditation while you do your yoga. And another great way for self-care is to write, is to start writing in a journal. When you pour out your feelings on paper, it's a fantastic way of checking in with oneself and processing overwhelming feelings. You can search for how to write a wellness journal or engage in writing on other topics that interest you. 
by keeping a daily gratitude journal could be a wonderful way to start to start journaling requires mindfulness and it could help balance emotion since it requires someone to be creative and thoughtful like what i like to do is i, I keep a journal it's just a basic journal i, I got at dollar tree and I just journal my thoughts, you know, like I have lots of journal listings every day. And I also practice lots of gratitude. Like I'm really grateful for what I have, like my house and my, I have a roof over my head and I, I can, I get uh, food, you know, cause I, I used to live in poverty. I, for, for several years, I had no electricity and running water in my house and I was very poor and, and I could only eat like peanut butter sandwiches each day. All I had was a loaf of bread and like peanut butter and that, that's all I could eat every day. So to this day, I just can't stomach eating peanut butter sandwiches. It makes me really sick unless honey or like jam is added. Like I just can't eat it. But I'm so grateful for what I have today. Another good way is meditation. I mentioned meditation before with yoga, but you can also do meditation by itself. You just sit there and relax and go, um, you know, and not quite. But you can go on YouTube and there's several, just several free meditation videos. A lot of them will have ads playing before. So I, I subscribe to... To YouTube Premium, it's just just a way that I don't have to look at ads. I just can't stand ads when I'm watching my YouTube videos. I'm a high, like I I watch lots of YouTube. I like to listen to it in the car, but I don't recommend listening to meditation in the car. I like make you feel tired, but I like to listen to me, to meditation videos in the morning when everybody's asleep, or I like to stay up late and listen to some meditation videos. It really helps me de-stress. And sometimes I get anxiety during the night, so I like to listen to meditation, you know, videos to help me, help me, you know, get, stop being so anxious and able to fall asleep. So it's really good to do meditation. Another good thing is exercise. Like you might be thinking, I don't like exercise. Well, you could just take a walk around the block or just even walk in place. If you're with your kid and you have no exercise machines, maybe just do some walking in place or walk around your couch, you know, just in your house, just, just get some movement. Or if you have stairs, you can go up and down the stairs because it's really important to care for your physical body. And physical activity is a powerful tool. It's effective for helping individuals deal with anxiety and depression. Because when you start being active, you release endorphins. And that actually helps you with depression and anxiety. So it's really important to exercise. You can run or walk and exercise in a gym or even in your house. And you should always set a time to exercise, like at least half an hour every two days, you know, to get some exercise. And if you could, if the kids overwhelm you, you can take a walk around the neighborhood. So it's a really good way to de-stress by exercising. Or you can have a spa day, like massage can be a relaxing way of knocking pains and aches away. The benefits of massage are many, according to research, besides relaxing the body and knocking away pain. It can relax, reduce anxiety and stress, and help you sleep. So you can like set a day where you hit the spa, you can get like deep muscle massage, like massages are great. Or you can also get manicures, pedicures, facials, and this can make you more confident and relaxed. Like I love to just go to the spa. There's a spa in Dallas I like to go to called Kane Spa and they have like massages or you can just relax in a hot tot tub, you know, or you could, there's like this water jet, you can put your back against the water jet and it just really helps with your muscles and it's just a really good place and they have really yummy food there. Another way for self-care is you should get outside. You could, because um, as, as you know, sunlight is, is good for vitamin D. It really helps you, you know, boost. Like if you're depressed, then that could really help you because vitamin D, you know, helps your depression. So get getting some sunlight. You should go to the park or do hiking or even sitting in your backyard. And then while your children, you know, are playing, it's really good to just get some sunlight. It's just really good for self-care. But, but make sure you put sunscreen because your skin you know, it's very sensitive. So make sure you put on sunscreen when you go out. So another way is you should take time off from your phone and social media. Because I know now everybody's so addicted to their phone. Like I'm always having my phone close by, you know, it's just so addicting. My phone is always there, it seems. And I just saw my phone so much and, you know, my screen activity, you know, sometimes it could be like eight hours in a week. You know, I just use my phone so much. So you should just stay away from your phone and you turn it off you know, and, and just step away and then, you know, put, give someone, someone your full attention. Like if your kids get home, like don't play on your phone, just look at your kids and listen to them talk, you know, and ask about their day and give them your full attention, you know, cause I, I, I just hate it when someone's on their phone and I'm trying to talk to them. It just really bothers me. So just make sure you stay away from your phone sometimes for your self care and stay off social media. Cause you know, that could really harm your, your self, your self care and your mental health. Because a lot of people on social media are living unrealistic lives 
or they're just showing you what they want you to see and they're not showing you everything they're not showing you all the bad things they're just showing you the good things so you could begin to think that they have like a, a life that's better than yours which is false like their, their lives are just as much turmoil as yours may have like you just don't know like you don't know what's happening behind closed doors so try to stay away from social media because people are just showing you the best of themselves like rarely will someone show you like the, what, what bad things are happening so social media is like a bad, bad way, you know, it can really harm your, your self-image. It can harm your mental health because you're always thinking that other people are, are, have it better than you. You can get jealous. So make sure you spend some time away from social media. And then another way is to get adequate sleep because a lot of times moms will be the first to wake up to prepare everybody's day and then the last to go to bed. So then you may need more sleep and it can be relaxing. And then taking, although taking care of your family is good, you should make it a habit to look after yourself. You should create a routine that you have to follow and stick to it, get enough sleep and avoid pushing your tiredness beyond your strength. Yeah, I like to um, make sure I get enough sleep. Sometimes I'll, I'll take a nap. Like actually after this podcast episode, I'm gonna be taking a nap for like an hour. You know, I call it a power nap. I like to do it almost every single day because that way I get more sleep because I do get up early and I do stay up late to make sure my kids and family are taken care of. So I like to just do a power nap. And if you're working full time, maybe you can do a power nap, you know, during your lunch hour. Like what I would do is I would go out to my car and lock all the doors, of course, and then like sleep in my car for the hour. And that really helped me, you know, get some self-care. Another thing to do is you can go out to eat with your family and friends. When you leave the house and eat out with your family and friends, it can be really nice. And you can try dining out if you frequently cook and have family meals at home. You know, sometimes it's just good to eat out and let somebody else serve you. Because it can just be really refreshing and give you a night off of cooking. But I don't recommend, you know, going out every single day because that can affect your budget. But just every once in a while, you can just go out to eat with your family or friends. You know, that way you won't have to cook and clean up. Like have somebody else do that for you. And it can really, you know, benefit your self-care you know and get you avoid you getting burned out by cooking every single day and most one of the most important things on this list is you need to learn to say no you really need to set some boundaries and you can't can't be a people pleaser you can't do everything for everybody you got to learn to say no like if you're I, i know that some some moms are in the pta and you're always getting piled up piled on with stuff to do like if you're getting if they're giving you too much to do you should say no or even at work you know like they give you so much to do like if you have too much to do you need to say no and they'll give it to somebody else you know they'll respect your decision so it's always good to say no and to set boundaries because otherwise you'll get too busy and get burned out because i know it's hard to say no especially if you're a mom like if your kids want something you know and you know you can't afford it you should always say no you can't just say oh i'll get it for them and I'll think of some way, you know, to afford it later. You need to say no. If you can't afford something for your kid, like the other day, my son was asking for this app that was $5. And although I could afford it, like I didn't, I didn't want to get him into the habit of always wanting paid apps. Like usually I'll download a free app on his tablet, but I said no. And he got really angry with me. He went upstairs to his room and was like, mama, you said no to me. And I said, of course I did. Like, I can't give you everything. Like money doesn't grow on trees, you know, and so I'm not going to give you like something $5, you know, an app when there's free apps. It makes no sense. And then and finally he calmed down and he goes, mom, I about I get this free app. And I said, okay, I'll get you the free app. Another good way is you could take him some baking or cooking classes and it could really help you, you know, learn how to cook better. So you can start like enjoying cooking because a lot of moms don't like to cook. Like I don't like to cook. So I'm thinking of taking like a cooking or baking class that will really help me get out of the house, you know, during while my kids are at school. And then it will it'll help me, you know, um, learn how to cook better and bake better and also be around other people. You know, I can maybe make some friends. So I, I think joining a cooking or baking class could really help. And other, other thing for self-care is you could volunteer. And, um, and self-care for busy moms should not be selfish, but a way of refreshing your body and mind to make you feel better. And volunteer is one of the best ways of serving others while giving you the satisfaction of being part of something you are passionate about. Like there's so many organizations. Like I like to volunteer at Unbound because Unbound helps human trafficking victims. So I'll volunteer my time and also go to Arlington Life Shelter. It's a homeless shelter for moms, you know, with kids. So I like to go there and help out as well. So I like to volunteer my time or I help out at church. Like I, I gave a lot of presents to so a family, like I, I, I adopted a family for Christmas and I bought lots of gifts for them. And then I went to my church and I helped, you know, organize all the gifts. So I volunteered my time and it really helped me because when you help others, you help yourself too. So it's good to, you know, do some charity work and, 
you could meet other people and that could you know lower your loneliness and it could raise your self-esteem so it's like really important to do some some uh, volunteer work another great way to self-care is to take care of your skin you should you know pamper yourself by taking care of your skin and face at home with a perfect face mask and it can cleanse and unclog pores so it's really good to invest in some face masks and there's lots of good face masks you can get on amazon or sephora or ulta or even the grocery store has some face masks you can get you can just sit you know for some time and, and put the face mask on and then you know that way your skin will be in better condition and also when you go outside you should put some sunscreen on always you know especially if you're an older woman like me i'm in my 40s so i like to when i go outside i like to put on some some um some sunscreen like i don't like to just go out with no sunscreen and my, my favorite sunscreen is by tatcha it's the silk sunscreen and it's really good i really like it for my skin it's really good for like older skin like i have and it, it helps you know with it helps boost elasticity too another great way is to create a playlist you can listen to music and that really helps boost your self-esteem you know and it's a lot a lot of fun it boosts your your fun too and, you know, it, it makes you not less depressed because you're listening to something you really like and it can make you more happy. And according to research, music triggers positive brain chemistry and improves brain chemical that supports aspects like immunity. So you can listen to your favorite album. You can go on, you know, Spotify or even I like to I like to use YouTube in the car because I can I can create a playlist with YouTube. And I, but I like to pay for YouTube premium so I don't have to listen to any ads. And then I just I just put that in the car. But I don't watch the videos. I just listen to the music in the car. Or you can even you know, get Pandora, that's like a radio, like an online radio. There's just several different, you know, different, you know, ways to listen to music. Or you can just listen to the plain old radio, you know, even though there's ads and stuff. Like I, I just can't stand ads though, but there's like so many, so many ways, and there's even, you know, like this radio service, you know, and there's just so so many different ways to listen to music in the car or on the go. You can just download music on your phone with iTunes. Another great way for self care is to do reading. You know, when you take time out of your busy schedule, you can dive into a good book and it really helps, you know, power down after an eventful day to sit there and read. Maybe you have a Kindle or even a paper book. It doesn't matter. You know, it can just reduce brain fog and stress. You can find books online, you know, such as Kindle. You can immediately download a book or you can even join a book club and that way you can meet other people and make friendships. So there you can go, go to um, meetup.com and you can look for a book club in your area there's plenty of book clubs out there and then they'll, they'll have a book assigned and everybody reads it and then they meet to talk about it. Like they'll meet, you know, at a restaurant or a bookstore. And I've seen book clubs before at restaurants. They were all together at this one restaurant I went to. They're a book club and they were discussing this book they read and it had like a big discussion going on. So it looked like, it looked like lots of fun. Another way is to laugh with friends. When you laugh, you know, it just helps you so much. It's like laughter is actually the best medicine and a good laugh can improve your health. It draws people together in ways that trigger emotional and physical changes in the body. And research has found that laughter triggers the brain to release endorphins and it can help relieve stress and pain and enhance well-being. So it's always important to, to spend some time laughing. Another great way for self-care is to clutter your home because when your home, you know, is disorganized it can help affect your mental well-being and it can affect kids you know and, and also your productivity and because you know your kids are already giving you enough stress like the last thing you need you know is like you're cluttering your home stressing you out and it can be stressful if you're living in a cluttered house you could start by cleaning some of the junk as part of self-care and you can like you can end up reducing your stress when you declutter like spend like 15 minutes decluttering your home and i'll give you access to my my, my free home planner and that way you can you know there's actually this decluttering routine it's a 15 minute decluttering checklist and the home planner i'll make sure to give you that you know in the show notes and then another way is to connect with a stranger you can like meet new people you know it's like in, um and, it, and it's, it gives you a chance to do something great and this can be like a new mom friend or you go or you join a new career you can meet people there and it's always good to take the initiative and go out and establish connections, you know, because not everybody's going to come to you. Sometimes you got to go out and meet people yourself and you can't expect everybody to come to you because a lot of people are shy as well. So if you go out and meet people and take the initiative, then you could like make some new friends. Another great way to self-care is to keep hydrated. Like I'm always keeping water by my desk, you know, because it's just so great for optimal performance. And when you increase your water intake, it uh, really helps, you know, helps your diet be more healthy and it helps your bowel movements. Like when you drink a lot, enough water, 
So otherwise you can have really hard bowel movements and that could cause a lot of pain. So it's always good to keep hydrated and drink water all day. It really helps you. Like I make sure to, to, to drink, you know, eight glasses of water a day. And it can also help your skin too. Because my skin, you know, I always get compliments on my skin. I'm not wearing any makeup at all today. And I get lots of compliments on my skin. Like I only have a few wrinkles right here on my forehead. You can't really see them. Like you're like hairline wrinkles. But I take really good care of my skin. Like I go out and use sunscreen. I, I get enough water. I take vitamins for my skin. I take biotin. So I always make sure to, to take care of my skin by keeping hydrated. Another great way is maybe you can have brunch with your friend, you know, go out with your friends, you know, and so if you have, you can go out for dinner or coffee. And if you have no friends, you can join meetup.com and there maybe there's like a lunch date. You can meet somebody, you know, with a bunch of friends and you can just go out and it's just, help, it's just helpful to have like a girl's day where you go out with your friends, you know, or a boy's day. It can be a lot of fun to get away from your kids. Another great way is you can eat healthy foods. Like health, eating healthy is very great for self care. If you don't, if you just eat like carbs all day, like chips and and ice cream and you know cookies, that could really help like harm your your um your health. But if you eat you know healthy foods like salads or fruit or vegetables, like you instead of getting into a cookie jar, you can have a banana or an apple or a bowl of fruit, and you should replace your pantry shelves with healthy food like nuts and um, canned beans and quinoa and you put processed foods on the back and so whatever is out of sight is out of mind so that's really important another way is you could play in a play date like if you you like if you know some um some other other kids that are near to like the same age as your kids you can do a play date and that way you could that your kids can play with their kids and then you can talk with the mom and have like a play date it's really great you know for self-care and a strong social life is vital in protecting against cognitive decline. And individuals with positive social interactions will tend to have better brain power with age. And the last on the list is to take a long, relaxing bath. Rather than taking a quick shower, you can take time and soak in a bath for some time. And as you soak in the tub, you can switch on music, have some wine, and indulge as you enjoy your bath. Like I like to buy these bath bombs from Lush. And they're these big bath bombs. And they, around Mother's Day, they had this big set where you get, you get all these bath bombs for like, uh, I think $60 or so. And I bought that, like two of them. And I've been using those, you know, for my bath. It's just so much better. Like I, I just, I just hate, you know, just taking a quick shower. I like to just go in a bath and just soak. And I like to put some lavender bubble bath, you know, and just maybe listen to some music or a meditation and just soak in there. And during that time, like everybody knows in the house to, to leave me alone. Cause that's, that's uh, mama's time, you know, for her, her bath and nobody should bother me. And I just close the door and even the pets, you know, keep them out. Because, you know, every time I go take a bath or I'm in the bathroom, the pets come in and they want all this attention, you know, because I'm sitting still, I guess. But, you know, so otherwise all the pets would come in the bath. And one time I had the door open and Maggie, she's one of my cats, like she came in the bath and she jumped on, on the side of the bath and looked at me and she started purring like she wanted me to pet her. But I couldn't, I couldn't pet her because my hands were all wet. I know she wouldn't like that. So she just like bothered me in the bath. So even your pets could bother you. So when you take a bath, you need to close that door. So if you need more self-care ideas, I recommend visiting my, my blog at mombeach.com. And also go to the show notes, mombeach.com forward slash podcast, because you can get your free home binder. And that has the 30-minute the quick pickup for decluttering. And there's also a decluttering checklist. And there's even like planner stickers and a weekly meal planner in there and short chart. So definitely, you know, go to the show notes so you can get your free home binder. Hope everyone has a wonderful day. Stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening to the Becky Beach Show. Please go to mombeach.com forward slash podcast to learn more about my podcast and for show notes. If you want a 2022 free printable goal planner, please go to mombeach.com forward slash subscribe. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Have a great day. Goodbye.